problem at all. I've got a sweaty face. Oh, here, you're, the, whole, the whole country has sweaty faces now at this stage. Oh, God, hell tonight. How are you, how are you doing temperature-wise in Mayo? Oh, I'm actually in Leitrim. I'm actually in Leitrim. Leitrim and Dorn. I'm kind of like near Leitrim there in the shortest coastline. So that's where I, I moved away from uh, Mayo last But um, yeah, it's going good. It's going good. It's going good. How are you getting where you based? I, we moved back down to Tip. We're back down to Tipperary, yeah. Oh, so, nice. Yeah, nice. It's, it was, um, well, I say moved back down to Mrs. is from Dublin, but she always wanted to live in Tip. So I was like, all right, no really? better time. Like, so back down where you can actually really? afford some shit. But I forgot, yes. it's always about three or four degrees hotter here than it is in, in Dublin. Like, it was 33 degrees the other day here. It's always for Tip. Yeah. Oh, wow. It's a I never hot, knew that. Hot. Well, you're heading Tip into Kilkenny. Kilkenny is the hottest place in the country, like. Heading into Wexford, but wow. Kilkenny, Kilkenny as a measurement typically is always the hottest fucking place in the country. Okay, okay, I get you. I get you. I Hence get why you. they have some great spuds and stuff like that coming out of Kilkenny and Tipperary. <laughs> <laughs> so how's life? Fucking powerful, man. Power, like I, I cannot, I can't suggest country living for people more. Like people don't appreciate how much your heart rate can fucking slow down living living in Dublin for twelve years, like, and you're just your your temper levels everything stress levels the whole lot just came down lads are pure easy going in the country are you out in the country i'm out in the countryside yeah i'm out in the countryside and i think that's the that's where i'll stay do you know what i mean i sorry if my internet connection is a bit slow here i'm on that i'm on an old dongle and it plays up every now and again but uh yeah no i'm in the countryside yeah i'm in the countryside but i'm like 10 minutes from Bundoran and i'm like maybe 15 20 minutes from Sligo. So I'm I'm kind of in between two towns, you know what I mean? Right, nice. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I couldn't picture you living in, like, fucking Portobello in Dublin, like that's it to me. <laughs> <laughs> no, no I, do, I, I don't think it would work. I don't think it would work. I like, I like Dublin. Cowboy is always slagging me because he says I don't like Dublin, but I like Dublin, but uh, I don't know, I have the countryman's way. I mean, I'm driving to Dublin, I'm like... Oh, fuck, I have to go to Dublin. It's like a penance for me. Do you know what I mean? But then when I'm there, I have great crack, I have a few pints, meet all my friends, and then I'm happy to be leaving again. Do you know what I mean? It's yeah. just, it's just who I am. You do you kind know? of have to put on the big city jacket, don't you? You know, in, in your head, like, you have to go, right, time to put on my angry face now, because, you know... That's it, just... that's it, that's it. And it's, it's, just, it's just one of those things, I think, when you grow up in the countryside, you're like, oh, Dublin. Oh yeah, yeah. You're, you're there for a while. There for a while, then you, you you love it. Do you know what I mean? And it's hard to get out of it because it's such good crack. You know, that's it. All the crack we see was it was an easy decision for us because the crack was gone. There was no crack, like because fucking okay. COVID, you know everything okay. was locked down. Like so, Ara, we were always going to move to the countryside anyway. Like you know what I mean? Because herself just had she had this magical notion of it. In fairness, like it is. I should laugh. I was. I was to, I've given descriptions before how easy going and slow life moving is before and I, I've said it to a few people about the first time I went to order aisle here in the house when we moved down for the first time you know I was going yes. to order an aisle and I was ringing and I couldn't get fucking through and I finally got through and I had my card ready to go give the order and big Dublin fucking head in me order and yes sir I need this and and your man I swear to God after about 50 rings he answered the phone with well <laughs> <laughs> just that was it <laughs> completely disarmed me like well that's it that's and I was, it oh, oh, well how are you I, I fucking not too bad because I, I was up amped up in my head like and even i i needed a plumber for an, another job that i'm doing over the road of the parents place because we're doing putting up a thing and i felt it is I, I won't get you this week tom but you're looking i'll try and get you when i can he says i'm flat to the matter i said no bother i said look it i might find another fella do oh fuck do if you can find another fella that found another fella job done six weeks ago peter Six fucking weeks ago, the job is done. Your man texted me last night. Well, Tom, do you get any luck with a plumber? I'm like, any luck with a fucking plumber? Like, <laughs> do you know what I'm, but there was no badness in it. There was no this. He had me on mine, but because only now he was he was going to. It's, it's just the way it is. I have actually a funny story. And it's maybe the the, the, the scary side of the countryside. Oh, yeah, yeah. Speaking, of, speaking of oil. And the man came here and he filled up the oil and we're happy enough, you know what I mean? Well, that last while we're sorted. But he didn't he didn't take any payment. He just came and he filled it up. We rang him. <laughs> and then we're like, I'll ring him. And he rang him back. And uh, he was like, Oh, sure, my house is just down the road there. Just just drop the money in the envelope there. Do you know what I mean? And I was like, and the girlfriend was like, We should get a receipt. Do you know what I mean? I was like, it'd be grand, it'd be grand. And uh 
we're driving down, but the, we're seeing these rams. I don't know if you've ever seen rams. Yeah, they yeah. Look, that, like, I'm a country fella, but I'm from a town as well. Do you know what I mean? I'm kind of playing it. I'm, I'm a chained country person. Oh, you're a way. townie, so it's a different I'm, story. I'm, we're all cultures to Dublin people, but you're a townie to me. I'm actually a bit of a townie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, a bit yeah, of a townie. Yeah. But I want to be a country person. But uh, we're driving along and I was, and we've seen these rams. And the girlfriend, she got out and she loves rams. And they are massive fucking heads in them. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> like, sheep are one thing. But if anybody's seen a ram, they look They'd fucking fuck majestic. You up. Do you know what I mean? They'd they fuck could fuck you, you up. up as well. Yeah. But there were, two, there, were, there were Suffolk rams. And we're looking at them. And we're like, oh, they're cool. Went, and I was, went to your man's house. It was this small little house with a load of fucking oil drums around it. Put the money in it, rang them and said... When he's there, and he's like, oh, so there's no bother at all. No bother. Drive him back. I said, we'll go this way. We'll go the other way. She goes, no, no, we'll go back and see the rams. And I was like, oh, so we'll back and see the rams, right? We'll back and see the rams. Then this Jeep pulls up, and another car pulls up behind us. Oh, that's what are you doing there looking at them fucking rams? What are you doing? The man got out of the car. The man got out of the car. I was like, I was like this. I was kind of bemused, and I thought there was going to be some sort of altercation. And I was like, huh? I was confused. I was kind of winding down the window, and I was like, he goes, were you looking at them rams there, were you? I was like, uh, rams? <laughs> and we drove out of it. He said, do you know? And he goes, them, them rams are 500 ahead. Five, maybe 900 ahead. Uh, and I was like, they're 900, are they? That I met it worse when I asked oh. Price. <laughs> but then eventually he copped on that we weren't trying to steal the rams, put them in the back of my tour, <laughs> Toyota Corolla, and head off with the rams. You know what I mean? But uh, they can be clannish enough as well, you know? <laughs> That's yeah. There's definitely you see. I uh, we've had a very soft landing here because I'm from here, right here. I'm from okay. the, literally the house we're, we're we're in at the minute was built in a field that is called Tom O'Mahony's field. This was Brilliant. my grandfather's field. You know what I mean? Like I learned to drive a tractor literally under where I am right now. Do you know? Brilliant. So we're very much a soft landing. But I do know, like we've lived in other parts of the country and just twitching curtains for a while, looking out, going, who's "Yes, our, who's yes. our man now?" You know. And, yes, exactly. And the best thing you can do is just fucking go introduce yourself to everybody. Like, even if it just... I think so. I think so. I think the best thing to do is go to the local pub and just get pissed and make a fool of yourself. And then they go, oh, he's grand. Do you know what I mean? A hundred percent. On hundred... We lived in a place now out near uh, kind of Kildare Offaly border. And it was bog country. You know, these were all bog men. Like, and there was... It was all men in their 50s and 60s. You know, all the women had fucked off to Dublin back in the day. And these, all these yes. poor cunts were left with small farms. And they know, and only each other. It's the story of the country over, like. But like the shit they would give each other was at like the the banter levels between them, like violent, violent levels of abuse. Yes. That to, and it was, mwah, it was glorious. Top, top class, top class slagging. <laughs> I br- I used to I brought a couple of lads in with me, like from, out from Dublin, like geez, you have to come out and meet, you know, see this place. It's 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 the real deal, like, and they weren't ready for it straight away. Like one of the boys now he'd be. Do you know, he had a fair bit of timber on him. He's a heavy enough lad, like. <laughs> and like, Jesus, he came through the door and said, fucking hell tonight, fucking hell. It's the pub after fucking tilting. Christ above, you know. And, <laughs> and he's a lovely camphill, and it, but it was their way. And they're just giving each other dogs abuse. But it was yes, it was yes. interesting to see like how he wasn't ready for a tub. For me, that yes. was mother's milk. I was like, this is the fucking job now. This is what you're waiting. You were bringing boys to get uh, nailed by the locals. You know what I mean? Yeah. Brilliant. Absolutely, absolutely. Absolutely. And so when did you move down, Tom? When did we you move down to February? February. February. Oh, nice. Yeah. Okay, nice, nice, nice. Our and what t- was the what was the crack in Dublin? It started to get a bit. It was just lockdown. No pubs just, open. No, 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 not no open. So that was the thing. Like there was fuck all open. So it was just. And the big thing for me was gigs, like because it proved yes. itself last summer when we level three or whatever the fuck we went to or whatever they called it. And, when they were yeah. giving at numbers and I went and did a bunch of gigs and none of them, they were everywhere, but Dublin, everywhere, but yes. Dublin, Galway, yes. Belfast, Cork, Limerick, but Dublin. So I was like, all right, so it'll be the last one to recover because it's too big. You know what I mean? Like comedy club yeah. wise and stuff like that. So. Yeah. Yeah. I suppose. Yeah. And if they're under a spotlight there as well. The countryside can, you know, and you don't have a vaccine come in, you know what I mean? But yeah. uh, I'm not saying that's what they're doing, but that's that's what they might do. But, you know, in Dublin, they're under the spotlight a bit more, so it's a bit harder for them. Yeah, the gigs is tough. The gigs is tough. Um, How's my sound there, Tom? Is my sound okay? Oh, you're coming through lovely. You're coming yeah. through lovely. Yeah, no, you're the finest. You're the finest. Yeah, it, it's a bit loosey-goosey in the country, all right? Things would go, Eric, go on your grand, you know what I mean? So Exactly, exactly, yeah. yeah but it's, but- it, it's a... 
it's a comedy of errors, the whole lockdown and oh, the, the, like, it'd be, make a brilliant, brilliant comedy sketch if nobody died, like, do you know what I mean? Because yes, because the way, yeah, they, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? If the way they, they've handled it is just ridiculous. Like, I could go down to Tipperary now, go to the local hotel, shift the face of every young one in the place and then come back up to where I'm living and can't go to the pub and you can't go to your local pub. So, there's no, there's no head or tail to it, you know? I had a fellow on a couple of weeks ago. He's the Ireland scrum coach for the Irish rugby team, you know, and he was saying, I said, fair play, Jiz, you kept COVID out of the camp. Like a lot of rugby teams and sports teams have gone down with it and stuff. He said, I know, yes, we follow the old protocols, but they're a bit on the fucking stupid side. Well, you know, he says, we're, he's, we have to go into the, ca- like, not the canteen, but where they'd eat, you know, at lunchtime. I've to all sit two to a table or whatever it is and fucking two meters apart and, I said, but you've just come in off the training paddock after welting the heads off each other and rubbing each other's balls and fucking rolling around. Yes, with. I said, yes. Exactly, Tom. Exactly. That's where we're at, insanity-wise. Like, we just Crazy. have been molesting each other out in the fucking field. <laughs> and now we just come in and sit two metres apart and queue separately and we can't be breathing on each other. It's, it's just, you know, but look at... I think we're the, the the road is opening up a small bit. Like, uh, what's it Hopefully. like, Bundoran direction? I mean, that's that's holiday territory over there, really. It's so holiday it's, territory, yeah, and it's packed. It's it's just packed, like, do you know what I mean? And they said there's a few cases in Donegal. I think it's the highest, but I think it's up further towards the north. But I don't know. It, it's business as usual. Do you know what I mean? Places are opened, and uh, they're all eating outside. They've all built these kind of wooden cabin things yeah. and they're all they're all drinking outside and it seems to be packed especially with the warm weather Do you know yeah. it looks it looks like a bit of crack you know um but i don't know when gigs will be starting again what do, when are you book have you booked gigs say you starting gigs yeah for well the first i i'm doing a, a private gig sounds fucking dirty dearly but i'm doing a <laughs> it's not it's but it's outdoors it's outdoors next weekend actually in in wicklow but oh, as far as actual gigs gigs goes, they, uh, be September, I'd say. Well, end of August, yes. September before they really kick off. Like that's a, that's what's been booked in so far. But sure, even they don't know. Sure, it's like yeah, ah, yeah. And then they could cancel. They could cancel the gigs then as well. That's the crazy thing, you know. There's you know? there's one lad in particular I know now, Bernard Casey, and he had he I think he'd sold out the INEC. You know, he has that character. He plays he plays kind of two Kerry characters, a nephew and a fucking bollocks of an uncle. Um, okay. okay. Very big on Facebook. Very big. He's on the guy Facebook. is he? Is he the guy that does all the voices? No. 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 Although he can, he can do. He's sometimes, but he that wouldn't do his thing. No, he wouldn't be doing okay. impressions and stuff. But he's from uh, I don't know. He's from Valencia. He's from South Kerry anyway. But it's normally hey. based hey. around football and stuff. But he had the INEC sold out, and wow. he's had wow. to move it five times. Like, wow, wow, that's a shame. Yeah, you know, that's but, the thing. Yeah. How long have you been doing the comedy for years, Tom? Have you? Years and years. Yeah, geez, I think yeah. we're 12 or 13 years, I think, at this stage, doing stand up. Wow. Yeah. Wow, wow, wow. Was Great that, stuff. that was the thing, like, because was it a hard transition, do you reckon, from going for obviously you'd, you'd established a character and all the rest of it as French toast? But yes. actually, first and foremost, where did French toast come Was that your choice? <laughs> um, yeah, it- yeah, it was. It was kind of like I was traveling a few years ago. And I was knocking around Asia and uh, my mates were just texting back and over, like, what's funny names? And somebody was always called Mossy because, I don't know, their old lady had a green beard or something. You know what I mean? Or just fucking, <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, or they had a green jacket in school. And then we are just messing, you know, emailing back and forth. And I was like, oh, French toast. And my mate goes, French toast or tool. And just, I tried to think of a better name, reason. I was going to think of like a hostage situation and all I could make people was French toast. But that probably would have been a better story. But um yeah no so that's the only name so <laughs> so then i came back and i'd long hair i'd really long hair and yeah. i had bangles and i'd like oh, weird uh, fishing fishing pants and i was coming back and i was like cool man i was in thailand and i was cool back to the small town you know yeah it was like frodo and frodo when he came <laughs> back and just joined the ring you know what i mean came back and you see like people you know going wow he's such a sage now but then people were just like Look at the fucking head in him. Do you know what I mean? That, <laughs> you know full well that's what they're doing. Yeah, back, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just like brought back to reality. And the boys took a look at me and they're like, do you want to be in it? And I was like, ah, yeah. They'd done a demo before that, about maybe a year before that. And um, it went very well. The demo went very well. And uh, But it was only cheering among certain people, but it was doing well. And then they made this demo. And uh, I was in that one. And then the rest is history. Do you know what I mean? It, it just blew up. It blew up. It really did. 
it was it must have been a phenomenal turn of events like for one minute you're just landing in home the next thing you're like eric go on yeah with your long hair and all that and then all of a sudden it fucking exploded like like before anything had exploded. well well what happened was that demo then was i think it was on youtube for about it could have been on for a year year and a half so right. it had built up it had built up a good following do you know what i mean and there was a couple of episodes like we did one i think we did like Oh, what do we do? Like a two week shoot or something. Like we were filming for like the lad that plays Chris, the Viper. He he was doing um he was doing a college course in Bally Farmers, I think, at the time, media right. design uh, or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and all his mates came down from Dublin and uh, they just they had too much gear. You know, students they were grabbing as much gear as they could get. Like they had lights, they had fucking ridiculous amount of shit, like and uh so they were using every single possible thing because I think they were going to use it as a project. But then he threw it up on YouTube and it gained a bit of traction for that year and a half. Me and Martin, Martin was living in Sweden at the time. The lad that plays Eddie. Yeah. And uh, the guy that plays the boo, Tom Kigallan, me and him decided to move to Sweden during this time. During this time. And uh, we were working in Sweden doing odd jobs and drinking and smoking and fighting, as they say. Yeah. And uh then we came back and then we were coming back and forth, you know what I mean? And we're kind of like getting recognized in the airport. Like, hey, you're your man, French toast. And I was like, what? Do you know what I mean? Something that we did just like was a college project, you know what I mean? Yeah. And came back and then boys like, oh, we'll do another, we'll do another episode. And I was like, yeah. And then the storyline thing came up. And uh, the guys were like, you, you want to enter this, enter this. And um, I think it was a guy, he was a cameraman called Simon Keaton. He uh, was in, college course with uh, Chris and he was like into the storyline thing and uh, it was if he didn't say that we probably would have never entered it do you know what I mean yeah yeah I entered that and I was like you had to write something and then you had to propose it and then you sent it off and then you were in competition with other people do you know what I mean I think there was a I can't remember it was a video it was there was a, a show that was Nick and Nick with us in the storyline at the time it was like a video they were in a video show, show. but there were some big names in that storyline like uh, Frank McCabe um, we had done a short as well that was in it and uh, there was a few other people that were big people so I think we just had the fan base built up so right. in a way in a way it was kind of like we cheated because we had the fan base I think now if they do the storyline it has to be an original do you know what I mean we built I, the fan base on YouTube already so we kind of had a bit of a head start do you know what I mean I'm with you yeah yeah yeah, yeah. but yeah. sure at the same time I mean there's lads getting head starts on things you know I, I've been in comedy clubs and you're going who the fuck is this guy and all of a sudden you know he's brought this fan base with him you're going what the fuck? Yes, yes. Because I'm so backwards and I don't follow yes. anything. Like, I, oh, yeah, yeah. I had no idea. And you know, he's got a half a million subscribers yes. to his YouTube well, that, channel. Or that's, something like. that's the thing. And you can't begrudge them people. They've, they've found their own way. It's, it's almost like uh, video killed the radio star. Do you know what I mean? It's yeah. like fucking, you know, it's their big radio stars. And then TV came along and fucking blew it up. Do you know what I mean? People that were on radio that looked like a fucking thumb couldn't get any gigs then. Do you know what I mean? You know, that's that's the thing. And for the longest time, I was nearly a bit scoffing at it. I was like, Eriff, get the fuck out of that, you know. But that was just the old bastard in me and not willing to understand that things do move like and change and that people's taste. I, th- I think that's the thing. People want the people to pay their dues. Do you know what I mean? Especially in comedy. I think it's well, the comedy, the comedy club scene for sure, because it's, yeah. uh, you know, and it'll always be that way. It's the same in England, the same in the States. You do yeah. have to rack up the time in this club club scenes, putting on it's, shows. Yeah. Absolutely. Theatres and everything else. Go and I it. think I think that's I think there's that's there for a reason, because coming back to your first question, how do we translate the characters to the stand up? There's a perfect, perfect reason why people spend so long in the clubs and hone on their skills. And it was only after we did, we had that big following that we built up. We had loads of people. And then people were like, promoters would come, do you want to do some gigs? And we were like, like, we're four or five funny fuckers talking to us normally, but to get four or five people together, do you know what I mean? To yeah. come up with a show is very, very difficult. Do you know what I mean? And uh, we tried to come up with a sh- Well, we thought... It was like Emperor's New Clothes at that point. You know what I mean? Yes, we thought, of course. Yeah, yeah. We thought we were shit hot, like. So we just, yeah. just go on stage, half like characters, half drinking and just smoking and drinking and off our faces on stage. And then people realized that, hang on a second, that's not funny. There's nobody editing it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, you, yeah. You, yeah. Know, you know yourself, if you had too many drinks on stage, you think you're funny as fuck. But everybody else, you know, you're not that funny. Not, not at all. And not time you might get away with being funny, but you're just like somebody's drunk uncle then. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Do you know? 
yeah. And yeah. Uh, so then later, then later on, we we learned that you had to put a bit of work into it. It wasn't as simple as as just showing up. Do you know what I mean? And yeah, I think there's this there's this thing in there's this thing in comedy as well that people looking in that they don't know is that it's all met up in the spot. Oh yeah. This oh yeah. Spontaneity yeah, yeah, yeah. and they keep this. It's almost like the lad that's like, no, nah, I don't have my homework done. I have no homework done, no. <laughs> and then, then it's like you go back and the fucking teacher calls him and he's fucking cracking jokes left, right, and center. That that fucking prick has his homework done. You know what I mean? He told <laughs> us we didn't. That's what it's like. That's what comedy is like. You know what I mean? And uh, that's a perfect analogy. Yeah. You know that's what I mean? Perfect analogy. But that's you have to. That's the thing you yeah. do. You do. You do have to put the fucking work in when it comes to that because. When it comes out the other end, then you can do this. When you have the groundwork of the the, sh- the show in place, then you can have a bit of spontaneity. If somebody falls off their fucking stool or somebody cracks a fart, one hundred percent, somebody's tip 100%. falls out. Do you know what I mean? It's you can jump on those moments then because you're like, we have banked the safe show with us, and this we yes. can add to it. You know what I mean? Yes, yes, it's a hundred percent. It's like it's almost like a, I don't know. It's like a boxer. He's learned the left right and then he can free flow and do the shuffle and dance around you know what I mean or it's like a singer fucking or a rapper or whatever he can freestyle we're only we only learned that we only learned that relatively recently do you know what I mean that you had to put the work in so we were we were victims of our own success when we came to the live stuff if that makes sense you know what yeah, I mean did you go as to the live stuff first following. as the gang the, the Hardy Books because yes, there was a Hardy, yes. Hardy Books live show wasn't there yes yeah. Yes, there was. And the first few were shite. They were terrible, like, but they were great crack. Don't get me wrong. If you oh, yeah. Them, you probably would have you probably would have been drinking with us, but nobody wants to see that for a comedy show. But uh, later on, then we did a show and did we were getting better. We came on as individual comics doing it like a five minute, yeah. five minute thing. So we were kind of cutting our teeth, cutting our teeth that way. And then we do like 10 minutes each. And then all of a sudden, We'd be doing 20 minutes each. And then we're like, oh, okay. And then, then we decided, Martin actually came up with the idea of doing a play, like a musical, a Hardy Bucks musical. Brilliant. And uh, yeah, <laughs> and that's the one we did for Vicar Street. And that was, that was brilliant. And he, it was written very, it was brilliant the way it was written. And it was, it was, it was well done. But at the same time, then you were kind of, you missed the improv kind of thing. Yeah, of course. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Because it was a play, you know, and you had to stick, kind of to the script but it was brilliant but now as the three books left myself cowboy and salmon it was like we started again again we were doing gigs and there was like five or six people there do you know what i mean at the start i was like ah, fuck this but then i was kind of like oh hang on a second this is good this is yeah. good because it's getting it's getting us and there was a comedian called terry norman he's doing comedy for a long yes, time i don't yeah, know if yeah. you know tom but uh, he was saying, this is this is just what comedy is. And I was like, well, we should have fucking arranged it better so there'd be more people at the gig. Do you know what I mean? But he was like, he goes, he goes, no, no, this is just what comedy is. And I was like, okay, yeah, yeah. So I, I kind of, the ego was squashed. And I said, no, just get on with it. Do you know what I mean? And that was good. That was good. So, and now we're going to start gigs again. Cowboy's doing gigs again. He's planning on doing gigs in September, I think. Brilliant. Because yeah. yeah. they, 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 that was the notion of, how would French toast translate? Because I can only imagine that tell as as you were explaining it to me. The, now it looked like he, the direction was loosey goosey enough to the point that we go, well, here's a structure around what we want. But because your character would go off on these fucking monologues sitting on a on a riverbank or whatever, I was going, now did you mention it? I was going, oh, is these is this the Thailand, the t- fellow from fucking Thailand is after bringing back this character, he's yes. after bringing back. Hey man. Sometimes you know you're, just, you're going. Look at that, this having the fucking time of his life. What, absolutely waffling about. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. You're just thinking. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. But then it's hard to translate to the stage. You know what I mean? Of Especially course, yeah. the Hardy Box fans and the Three Box Left fans are different than regular comedian fans because they they might not go to a comedy show. Do you know what I mean? They're wild fucking crazy bastards that'll be like wearing bootcut jeans and fucking Mayo lifting jerseys. weights all yeah. week. Yeah, and lifting weights all week and they're ready for fucking either a fight or a drink or I don't know, what else? Do you know what I mean? And so if you go on and you're trying to do some sort of I'm not, I don't want to abuse all the fans, like, do you know what I mean? But if you go on and you're trying to do something terrible, they'd be like you're, you're out of these worms, you know what I mean? Or you're fucking shouting catchphrases and you're kind of like do you know what I mean? So yeah. we have geared to it now. So what we initially, what we initially did was 
Salmon used to come on first, and Salmon is very funny. When he when he's on point, he's very funny. He was telling us that Owen, Owen Colgan, they did a gig called Culchy Night. I, I, was, night, I, I did it. I Owen rang me one night. He goes, would you come and do it with me? Myself Brilliant. and Salmon. And uh, yeah, I remember it was inside in town, and I was just like, because and again, I've done a couple of gigs with lads that from that scenario that have been on TV shows but didn't come from a stand up back, and they went to do and it just blew my mind the audience members. It was like, oh, this is you never, you will never darken the door of a comedy club. Like, and I love exactly, like, I love it as a variance because you have to kind of wrangle them into position because they're fucking sitting wrong, they're fucking licking each other's heads. And like you said, <laughs> they, they have that there's a, I, and this is kind of going off track, and we come back to it. There's I discussed with a guy, he, he's a journalist for, a, a, he's a rugby writer and he writes for a thing called Three, Three Ride Kings. And he, we had this discussion about there's, there is, there's a warrior in some people. There's a wild warrior in some people and you will, then people will never fit into an office. They'll never, yeah. they, and they just, they either need a route. They need to be, they need to be entertained slash, I suppose, curtailed with fucking savagery. Do you know what I mean? Yes, they 100%. Need savagery. 100%. And, 100%. And, and, and that's what's beautiful. Don't... That's what's beautiful oh, yeah. about it too. Yeah, 100%. And, and you, you, you're in, in, in agreement. You know who I'm talking about. Those. <laughs> yeah. I do, I do, I do. I'm, I'm, part, I'm, I'm a bit like that myself, to say, yeah. say, the, say the least. Do you know what I mean? But, um, yeah, and it, like, there was a perfect example at the end of the, what was it, the, the Vicar Street gig we did with our, the Hardy Box. I remember going into the, the, ja- the, the toilets and uh, there was puke jocks and a bra Beautiful. in the in the jacks like do you know what I mean and I'm like seriously you know, good time had there like yeah yeah well I'm saying I'm saying that's not a hard you should that should be put on a poster do you know what I mean <laughs> that exactly that should be the take a, a fucking picture of that next poster that exactly sums exactly. us up wildness maybe one fucking maybe steel toka boot would have just thrown in there just photoshopped <laughs> in you know what I mean just, <laughs> exactly 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 but um no but it is wildness it is wildness and Fuck it. Fuck it. Why not? These, these are some of the lads are the lads in Metro work. They used to hold on to the fucking Chuck key as they turned later yeah. on. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 That was absolute <laughs> fucking animals. Like, and when I, I remember I moved to Dublin first in the comedy scene, like lads thought I was a fucking savage. Like they were going, Jesus. Because just the things I used to come out with, I didn't realize I came from a farming construction background, but I, I always had an outward view of things. I was under, I was, you know, I wasn't a complete fucking Neanderthal, but I had tried to explain to lads, I'm fucking metropolitan as per the lads I went to school with. Like the boys, <laughs> the boys I went to school with could fucking rip the tire off a truck without using a jack or anything. Like these fucking savages, like that work yes. 18, 18 hours a day, yes. five and a half days a week, drink fucking yeah, 30 pints on a Saturday night, have a massive 100%. row with somebody, you know, fucking. W- and that's it. Not and, not maybe go, and then go to mass on Sunday. Like. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly, exactly, exactly. There was a perfect example of that. There's a lad in uh, our town called Tom Sheen Fuck, they call him. <laughs> and and uh, he's a good friend, he's a good friend of mine, he's a sound out king. But uh, a fight broke out in the local pub, and he just went to this, he was smoking a fag, he was outside the door, and he just. Not the sleeves, just pulling up the sleeves. He was like, he was fixing, he was going to fix a tap or do a bit of plumbing or something. He was like, just about to jump into the fight. Like, it was like as casual as that, you know? You know I, I absolutely love that. Like, all right. But that was the, <sighs> that was the ethos of Hardy Box as well. Do you know what I mean? That was the ethos of Hardy Box. It was, it was these wild lads that are endearing and they're adapt as each other, but they want something more, but they don't know what they want. And they're yeah. too afraid to get it. And no. I think I think that's what because meeting so many people, like I've I've uh, I had a chat with a carpenter the other day, and the same man, fucking brilliant carpenter, but he's like like that. He wants to do write comedy. He wants to fucking do he he, he rudderless, but yes. wild, you know, wild and fucking and some mad. of the most funniest people. Some of the most funniest people. If you could channel that, which is what yeah. Hartley Books did, it, ch- it was a brilliant fucking, it was a brilliant conduit, I think is the word they say. It's a fucking brilliant That's a good word. Isn't it? Like, it, yes. fucking, that's, oh, no, Tom, Tom Machine Fuck is the, is the phrase of this episode, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't care, I don't care what is said next. Tom Machine Fuck is. 
<laughs> Such a blunt nickname. Like, there's not even. Yeah, no, but he's uh, he's he's a legend. He's a legend. But uh, Hardy Oshkin as well. Do you know what I mean? But uh, but yeah, no, the Hardy box. That's what it was about. Do you know what I mean? And then it, later on, it kind of changed as we got older. So like, people are saying, would there be another series if we came back? But I think it could equally as be funny if it did come back. Do you know what I mean? If it did come back, I think it would be equally as funny as the Hardy box when they're a bit older, but they're still. You know, I've had this conversation with one of my friends that I train with and he was like saying, oh, when you get older, he was going on a stag and he was with his old school friends that he hadn't yeah. met in years. And uh, like he used to be a lunatic for the drink or whatever. And he was like, oh yeah, it's not too bad on Grand now on Grand. Then he came back the following weekend. He looked like a shell of a man. Do you know what I mean? He came back after. <laughs> and he, I go, what happened? He goes, yeah, I just realized I hadn't changed at all. It's just, I haven't been hanging around with the same lads. I'm still the same lunatic animal deep inside my soul yeah. you know what I mean and you are you know what I mean it just has to you have to sweep turn yeah you, you know? need to, I think you need to if you want to curtail it the only thing you can do is distract yourself with other things because that's what I had to do like there's to get to get away from the savagery I, I could even the bit of construction I went back into building back the road at, at the parents place like I turned into an ignorant fucking animal like just roaring and shouting fucking fell that's <laughs> out of it down the phone and I was like, what is wrong with me? Like, this is, <laughs> there's no need in all this fucking fire. Like, you know, just pure I think fucking. A, I think it's an Irish, it's an Irish male thing too, though. An Irish male country. I don't know. It's just like, there's a couple of flies flying around there. And I'd like, I devised this plan to leave like a bowl of Guinness out for the flies. And I had a bowl of Guinness and molasses and I had a mixed. And then like, I was sweeping and I was like, I just like real awkward brush and sure didn't I fucking knock the molasses and Guinness all over the place and I was like he cunts he cunts ah! <laughs> just roaring and shouting but that's <laughs> like if somebody was walking past the window then they'd be like what the hell is wrong what the hell is he having a fucking breakdown it's like the fucking kitchen he's having right? a breakdown over flies <laughs> over cleaning the kitchen do you know I but it, it's yeah it, it, there's it's it's undeniable what you're talking about. So I, I think the, all I could do for myself was kind of distract myself and hang around with softer folk to helped over the last 10 yes. years or so. Because if I yes. stayed, yes. I, I saw it. I used to do a bit about it. I saw it a couple of, mo- couple of years back at the grandmother's funeral. She lived to a fine age. And we were standing in the, in the watch, we call it, in the parlor or whatever, and people are coming in to shake your hands. And a couple of lads came in. I, I recognized, oh, geez, yeah, he was a year over, older than me or he was under me, you know, yeah, and one or two lads were had kind of distant cousins of mine as well. And just the pause on them, these yes. fucking paws, a bit like just hunched <laughs> over a fucking crow mangan look like, and just this, <laughs> well, it's all of your troubles. <laughs> and you know, if they took a bite out of the concrete wall, it wouldn't have looked any fucking weirder. Like just these, yes, yes, sort, of course, like, fire and fucking brimstone coming out of these bastards. Like you know, yeah. and, they, and yeah. this is the only way they can manifest because they don't have. They haven't, you know, expanded their mind in any way. They're just, and it, also, they I, I think it helps lads to work these sixteen-hour days in brutal jobs. Like if you're fucking working in a pig farm or something like that, or, you know, you're. It's hard, hard, hard work. I don't know how to do. It. And then you can understand. I went working with cowboy there for a while, um, plastering. I was laboring on him plastering, and he's like cowboy used to be, he used to be crazy for the drink, and like we're all had our, you know, we. We had our rites of passage with the drink, but yeah. like Cowboy, he'd be, he'd be working hard, hard, hard. Like he had three houses by the time he was 24 or something. Do you know what I mean? Pure, and, con- uh, pure country, yeah. like the most country thing ever. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, like, and uh, he used to be working really hard. And then you see him in the pub and he'd be just like, Cowboy would walk in, he'd walk in and he'd be just like, shots. And the barman would be like, what, what type of shots do you want? Anything. <laughs> do you know what I mean? It didn't, it, it didn't like, and he'd be just wild for the drink. After working that long, that hard, it's uh, it's kind of like some sort of cathartic release. They need it. They need that kind of release just to let the, the stress the week out. That's why, I don't know, with the pods being closed now, it's quite difficult. It's I think John B. Keane, have you seen that interview with John B. Keane yeah. where it, they're, in, they're interviewing his, his, wife, his wife? She's like, hi, uh, John gave up the drink before. Yeah, yeah, John gave up the drink before, but... Oh, no, no, he's, he's well to have a few. Like, he's, it's almost <laughs> like it's self-medicated, you know what I mean? The yeah. poor old wife was like, he was torturous. But it's the social outlet as well, I mean. It's the social outlet. The lads need to go out to the pub and just 
back at the moon and then they come back and they're nice and relaxed. Obviously, I'm not condoning alcoholism, but... <laughs> I know there, there, to... there is a time and a place like going to, to swing back to that that bar I was telling you about in where we moved out near awfully that time. Like them boys, yes. I don't know. I'd say I'd say that fucking thing never closed, to be honest. That pub never yes. fucking closed for this yes. whole thing. It couldn't. It couldn't. There was too many boys relied on it. Like not, yeah, yeah, yeah. not just for getting drink, because they might only drink six or seven pints on a Saturday night. But what I'm saying, they weren't going in and getting slaughtered, but they needed that social aspect, like of yes, fuck yes, the world we, and we fuck that cunt, and you know, and and yeah, bollocking yeah. things, and then having a bit of crack, and then playing a game of pool, and then fucking watching exactly, you know, watching fucking awfully getting beaten continuously on the floor. <laughs> 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 Which I, as a temporary person, was more than happy to fucking give it to him too. Like, but okay, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was <laughs> it, it was that side of things, like you know, that you could see it wouldn't have. Fuck, I couldn't see how it wouldn't wouldn't have worked like you know what I mean so when, when did you move to Dublin Tom when did you move to Dublin oh, just 12 years ago yeah, 12, 12 yeah years 10 years no it yeah. would have been 10 years ago I would have moved to Dublin and and did you did you start the comedy in Tipperary first or no you... I, in Cork I was living in Cork at the time oh you were living in Cork okay yeah. okay and there was a decent comedy scene there was a couple of small comedy clubs and one big comedy club go on no and... we, we were we played this city limits before yes this, yeah it's it, a lovely spot that, that was would have that... That was a beautiful spot. Oh, and that was the, I mean, it's the only fucking show in town really in Cork now, but once upon a time, there was comedy, uh, the city limits was the big one. And then you yeah. had a couple of ones and then this other one had opened up called the Crack House and ended up in there. And it was great. It was like a thing that was put together to the back of a bar, a back room of a bar and it was decorated, I'd say, out of a fella's fucking farm. Do you know that there was bits of <laughs> corrugated iron stuck to the wall? It wasn't trying to be ironic. Yes, yes, were, yes, and and hipster, but it I, by accident it was it was just old sofas that were fucked out of other places. He fucked them in there, and it made the perfect comedy club. Yes, and yes. should I because all my friends blown cork at the time when I started, they they'd never been to a comedy club, nor had I. Yes, and regardless of the fact that I was doing the same ten minutes every Saturday night, the lads kept leaving me on stage doing my ten minutes because I'd bring fucking ten or fifteen Brilliant. lads Brilliant. with me. And it was a kind of na- a way we'd start the night. Do you know, d- the boys would fucking go in, pay their five or six euros or whatever it was. And then we'd all fuck off together. But there'd be always a kind of a second wave of crowds. So the lads were delighted. We're getting two audiences on the one night. So we're letting me off. But it was great to cut my teeth in Brilliant. there. And some great comedy advice from the uh, late great friend of mine, uh, Billy Anderson. He died in a car accident. But he was a, tes- a, a fucking theologian when it came to comedy. Like he fucking knew Brilliant. all the, uh, you know, he fucking... Brilliant advices and stuff like that. So by the time I came up then to Dublin, I figured, right, you know, this I had made the decision that this is what I'm Brilliant. doing. Fair play. Fair play. Yeah. Have you, any advice? See, I'm kind of, I'm kind of, I have a love-hate relationship with it, really, because it's, uh, Cowboy loves it. He doesn't get nervous at all. I get very nervous and I'm going through the material and I'm like, I kind of want to be like, I want to be like a jazz musician. Being able to free flow, go back. That just have to put the reps in that at a time. You know what I mean? And there's so there's there's a few seconds where I've been on stage, and I do it in the guise of the character, and I, I still do it in the guise of the character. But there's sometimes for maybe a split second where you're like, oh yeah, I have this solved, and then the next joke is just like shit, and then you're like, oh no, you get this cold, yeah, cold yeah, 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 like, yeah, yeah. Oh, do you know what I mean? Yeah. But they, they would lands. But I can't, I can't relax till maybe a month after the gig. Do you know what I mean? I'm like, it, I can only have retrospect in the month after the gig. So maybe it's just a question for gigs. But how do you write? How do you write and how do you perform down? So well, the right how do you things, How do you practice? The right, oh, it's stage. This is the only place to do it. It's the only, and also what, what happens is it doesn't go fully away when you do it. It's communal stuff in that it does, you build up, after building up reps on a joke, and you go say you go do another joke. It isn't like starting from that first joke again day one. You know how to how to put her in gear now at this stage, and you know how to get all the way to sixth gear. Yeah. It isn't learning driving again. Yes, yes. it's just a different yes, vehicle. Yes. Do you get me? Yes. It's just yes, a different yes, car. Yes, yes. You just need to. Oh, and yes. all you need then is so once you have a methodology worked out, do you know. So as far as writing jokes, I I won't write them, script them, script them hard. Because okay, yeah, yeah. I kind of back my own my own ability to dialogue on stage and con- you know converse nearly with myself on stage a small bit, but I will. I'll I'm you're constantly making notes on the phone. 
So I'll have notes of yeah. the most bizarre shit. And I've gotten better at actually writing the notes because I'll come back three months later and go, Filipino fucking fish with the sombrero <laughs> earrings. What the fuck was I on when I? So I yes. but I often it'll go, but I leave, often leave it there and go, that'll come back. Because ever since then, <laughs> nothing fades away completely. It does like a yes. seed, leave it in there till soak away. And before you know it, you'll find it'll the come, time. Yeah, it'll come good. Come, but the, yeah. there'll be decisions then based on based on the the based on the area, the club, the time of the year, and everything too. And I go, that's the one to try now. That's the unless you are building towards a show. Say you're building towards yes. your own hour or something like that, and you might maybe you're weaving a theme through the whole thing, yes. of heartbreak yes. or something like that, which is what a lot of comedians do, and you know whatever the time they got, you know I don't know syphilis or something that could be their whole thing through it. But for me, I get yes, very I get very bored at one subject. I can't do it. There'll be a narrative yeah. through it. The narrative is that I'm semi-psychotic through the whole fucking thing. Brilliant. Brilliant. But Brilliant. The narr- that's as close as the narrative gets. It's- yeah, I've been doing the same kind of step for a long time. I'm kind of like, I feel like I'm cheating. Does that make sense? Do you know what I mean? Oh, I'm no, doing you absolutely, the same. Yeah, you absolutely are in a, in a sense. Like, but you have to remember too, if the new aud- if they're brand new audiences, then it's not been, you're not, you're not, yeah, you're not. You're not yeah. doing. I oh, I feel that all the time. I'm going. I can't fucking yeah. believe I did. And I remember early doors, maybe three years in, I could see a fella mouthing a fucking joke of mine, and it oh, killed no. me. And the same guy oh. came up and went, "I fucking love that joke." And I was like, "Oh man, I feel so bad." And he's like, "What the fuck? No, I wanted you. I really wanted that fucking that yeah. that bit you did." I went, "Ah, oh, but fuck." So I do, yes. I write a lot, a lot of material. Like yes, I turn yes. over a lot of fucking material, but it's, yes. it's purely That's because tough. I enjoy it. I have a gag where it's, yes, that is a tough, I have a gag where it's like, sometimes I get crazy urges. Like I want to headbutt a granny and give her a lick out or, do you know what I mean? Cra- crash a car. I want to crash a car or something. And uh, what else can I say? I want to tickle a bouncer's balls or, do you know what I mean? Um, you know, and, and I was saying all this stuff and then I, I was coming down then and I was chatting to some guy and he, some guy came up to me and he goes, oh, you know, like a couple of years ago, I had a nervous breakdown and uh, I was having these crazy ideas. And then my girlfriend came up to me, she goes, everybody has these crazy ideas. So she goes, I, I can relate to what you're saying then. And I was like, oh yeah, that's good. Did you find it funny? And he was like, ah, yeah, it was funny enough. Like, but, <laughs> but he could relate to it anyway. Do you know what I mean? So that was the main thing, you know? As you had him on board, Rick. I know I've gotten people come up to me and I, I, I knew it was time to maybe not to do it and do anything relative in the UK. It was only I was talking with somebody about it the other day. It was do people believe you? I went, oh, they do, yeah. Because they go, oh, how true was that story? I'm like, how true was what? Oh, oh, very true. Yeah, of course. No, some of them, but sure, there's no yes. good in telling it just a true story. Like unless it's a true yeah, observation. But if it's a story, then it can have yes. all sorts of legs. Now a lot of them, nine, probably seventy percent of them are born out of somewhere. But I remember I did this bit in London. And it was a bit about, I, I think I'd seen a woman in, it was in Dublin, that I, I need to be better educated on, um, you know, the, the, the religion of Islam, like, because I don't understand burqas. I don't, I don't understand attire. You know, I don't understand these people's, these women's clothes, because I said, I, I, for, I thought it was, you know, it was, it, was, it was quite a closed shop when it came to these things that you weren't allowed to abbreviate your burqa or whatever, because you know, maybe you're allowed to put a bedazzle down the side of it, or maybe you can put an Iron yes. Maiden patch on the back of it, you know, and <laughs> because, and I, I said, I only asked this is because and maybe somebody can educate me on this because I saw a woman in Dublin the other day wearing a burqa, but she was wearing an Angry Birds t-shirt over her burqa. And I okay. said, well, and I don't know if she, this was brilliantly ironic or just the crack that she really liked the game Angry Birds, or she was screaming a message to the world that she was okay. in fact, and then, yeah <laughs> and that was the, the joke move on done and I was doing like a 45 minute set and did the set and this couple of like, they were like BNP fucking whitest white lads and they come up to me being the whitest white lad too and thinking they were on board like, oh my fucking nice man fuck it up then fucking mussies I'm like oh Jesus no oh, lads no. No, no 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 I'm not Arbel. and then you're you're racist by association, then. Oh, you know yeah. I mean? oh, straight away, if, if anybody took a photograph, this fair-haired, blue-eyed, white guy standing with these two fucking English lads is like, absolutely, lads. Yes, everybody who isn't our colour isn't. You know, and it's like, oh, no, lads. Yeah, the, yeah. the whole joke was my ignorance. Yeah, of course. And 100%. a T-shirt. This was, uh, yeah, yes. I, 
No. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. yeah. They, and they missed all the other people that got slagged. And, you know, throughout my set, you know, from different nationalities to everything else to myself. No, they're one. Love that lad. You're like, right. Jesus. Uh, yeah, Christ. yeah. It's it, we obviously interpreted. That's the beautiful thing about comedy. You can take it any way you want. You know what I mean? Some people can get offended and some people can have a war cry and think you're saying something else when you're not saying something else, you know? Oh, yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I've had, really? I, had, I had a weird one one night where I got pulled. And I rarely get pulled on stuff. Like, because I'd normally go, that was on the stage relax and this isn't a corporate yeah. private gig Do you know if it was and you gave me outlines of things i'm to joke about then absolutely but this is a public forum so fuck off you know yes, that would be my normal yes, yes. but i yeah, got yeah. a chap one night came up and he was uh, american chap he was black guy fucking ridiculously good looking fella he came up and he was like <laughs> i remember thinking fucking hell his teeth were st- like just stunning looking man like fucking stunning uh-huh. and he says, can I ask you a question? I said, she's fire away, boss. Yeah, yeah. He says, now, I don't think you said it, but my, my girlfriend thinks you said it. I went, well, if you don't think I said it, then what are you doing over here? Okay, went, okay. Well, I, I, I just wanted to put it to bed that you didn't. Would you mind if I asked? And I went, oh, fine. But I said, you, fair enough, go on. I said, I, did you, when you took to the stage uh, and you addressed the audience for the first time, which is like, the poshest way I've ever heard my fucking self described going on stage. Like, I said, did you use the N word to talk? You know, to I went, what? No, what? I remember there was one or two lads there, oh, comedians wow. who were laughing, going, "No, nobody uses that word here." That's in a room full of almost all white people. That would make absolutely. Oh, no he sense. he was saying that. Did you use not on stage, but did you use it just before he came on stage? No, no, he did, no, no. He thought I went on stage, took the mic, and went. How's it going? N words. Basically. Okay. And I didn't. I must, I don't know what I said, but I would have said, how are you lads? Or something like that, but they're yes. American ears. Yes. And he went, I, I, yeah, I fucking knew yes. you didn't say it. I says, well, you may go back and tell your fucking missus that she can now re- retrospectively enjoy the rest of my set. Man, you want to be putting her in her fucking place. That makes no yes. fucking sense. I says, nobody says that. In nobody, that's not a word said yeah. here because that, in fact, that's from America. I says, so take it back to America with you. Says, Thanks yes. for that. And your one was throwing me filthies as I was walking past then about 10 minutes later, like throw me a right. So I, I can't fucking leave this. I can't have this. And it was, yes. it was, it was ironic that she was white and you talk about punching above her wage. Your man, she was a fucking, she wasn't built for soft ground, if you know what I mean. Like she. <laughs> <laughs> I had a similar one where I came on stage and there was a girl sitting in the front row, row with her boyfriend, but she was well endowed if, uh, yeah. man to say yeah she was um strong yeah she was no she was big very big in the front and right. uh, yeah, yeah 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 and she was wearing a very skimpy t-shirt and i just you know, i was improv and i was in the middle of improv or something i said something and i said something and then for the rest of the gig it was in the back of my head that i was kind of like i better apologize for what i said for the rest of the gig do you know what i mean and i was like trying to make it up and then afterwards we're getting pictures i was like just sorry about that what i said sorry about what i said but she she didn't take offense the boyfriend didn't take offense. It was only my little brain that made it bigger than it was. Do you know what I mean? You I'm know, with I, you, yeah. You know, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, I kind of ruined I kind of ruined my own set then for lamenting on it while I was going through my jokes. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, um, I've, I've been there in the early days. All right, when you've said yeah. something, it's like, should I have said that? But yeah. then you absolutely should have said it. Anything yeah. goes on stage, I think. Anything goes yeah, on yeah. stage. Once it's funny and coming from a good place, I think yeah. anything goes on a stage in a public forum I think because we have to be allowed as the court jesters before we know it yes like before we, like since early, you know since medieval times there was jesters who were to fucking to keep the hierarchy in fucking check was their real you know to put them down a notch or two 100%, 100% 100% that's the whole yeah. role of the comedian and if we take yeah. that away and go oh Jesus Christ we shouldn't say no it should yeah. be said in fact yeah, yeah. It absolutely fucking should be and said it's like. It's like the fool. The fool was the only one that could talk to the king in, what is it, King Lear. Mm. He was the only one that could talk to the king because he thought he was a fool. Do you know what I mean? The many yeah. things he was said in jest, you know, but yeah, 100%, 100%. But the, yeah, we just have to get, I have to get my com- com- comedy head on board again. But I, I'm writing stuff down the phone the whole time. I've got loads of stuff down the phone, but it, it's to how, how to formulate it into a joke thing that I find difficult. Do you know what I mean? Like I've random ideas, but like you said, like, uh, what was the thing you had written down like a, a goldfish wearing something do you know what I mean you're like yes. how does it come up with that 
yeah, you sombrero know? and earrings. Like these things yes. don't. But also, I mean, base you you have a fantastic parachute and or a, you know soft landing in that when you go on stage, people are expecting French toast. So he and he's off the wall anyway. Yes. So you literally, I feel I would be entertained and expect you to be on stage in front of me, saying, "Do you know when?" And you're going, oh, fuck it, this is going to be good. Yes. Tee yes, him up yes. for it and just go, a fucking earrings, huh? Yeah. What, a, yeah. what about fucking them? Yeah. Nobody knows yeah. what you're talking about, but it's all in the delivery and how much you look like you're enjoying it in belief-wise. I think so too. I think so too. And people people want to see your enjoyment. They want oh, absolutely. To yeah, they want yeah. to laugh. Yeah. They want I, to laugh. I, I'm a firm believer in that. If that you And that's how you know jokes are dead too. So if you're dead behind the eyes, people don't yes. know why they're not they, they won't know why they're not picking up picking it up because it's a subliminal thing. Like it's, that's the yes. subtlety of being in the room with people. If you're if you're dead behind the eyes in the telling of a story, you I guarantee you there is not no machine in the world that could ever me- measure that. But yes, yes, human yes. to human contact, people will pick it up from your pores, the tiny nuances of your face, the lack of light in your eyes and the head and, and the exci- like. People can see the excitement. Good, bad, or indifferent. If I've written a pure stupid yes. fucking thing that makes no sense, good, bad, or indifferent, people will see my ex- silly, ex- child, childlike excitement. And yes, you often see course. people laughing, going, "What the fuck the fuck's he on about?" He's and just, he, he's a, he's like I say this with Salmon. He's got a funny, funny bones. You know, there was a film there about funny bones. Yeah, comedians, <laughs> but like he, Salmon's got funny bones, and yeah. Owen is Owen Colgan is the same. They've got f- funny. You just look at them and you start laughing. There's away. a brilliant weirdness to those two lads doing that gig that night. And I know actually you were you were saying you were talking about it doing that gig that night with the Colchi gig. Yeah, yeah. The, the lads and I only barely knew Owen. I think I well, I gigged with him once out in I think it was out in Tella, and it wasn't a gig for Owen. Like these people were it's, fucking wild rough, and he'd never done it. And I'd done it a good few times, and he just didn't. I think why I got away without there because I was so aggressive. I was more aggressive yes. than them. And they just yes, thought, yes. that's a mad fucking culture. We don't know anything about culture, so we're frightened of things we don't know about. And that fucker seems dangerous. So yes, 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 if, yes. You've, if you virtually and verbally take, are taking a step back and almost, uh, I suppose, self-deprecating, and you, you know what I mean? You're always, you're punching down on yourself all the time. Whereas yes. when, in, in these sort of rooms, that we're, you're, when you're getting old ones ordering like a bucket of wicked, you know, <laughs> at fucking half six, and she's brought her fucking dog with her into the fucking pub, into the comedy club. Do you know what I mean? Yes. And ha- half the audience, because it's a warm night, haven't got anything on from the waist up. Like, you know, you're going, yes. these people need to be absolutely ripped into like fucking yes. chainsaw side. And, and I remember Owen went, <laughs> Owen was new to it. He was just, he was just going on about wanking. And he's like, do you know, what? <laughs> do you know, I need to be wanking. <laughs> and, yes. I, and these yes. people, they're just is that is that, is that just a rite of passage with comedians? They have to go through a phase of talking about wanking. <laughs> uh, yeah, oh, it... absolutely. Like, well, I mean, there's, I mean, it's it's played, played a major part in a lot of people's lives. <laughs> 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 so, yeah, so I suppose you, it, it's it's a fair enough thing, like you know, to talk about. I suppose that and fucking whatever shopping and fucking flying relationship. You know? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You, you I know. know. You got it, and it's it is, but it's always funny to hear it from a grown man with a beard, like who's just yes, yes. You know, I remember, and, I remember when Owen was doing that gig. I remember him telling me, but I think he went out again since. I think he oh, went he out did. Against it. He would have, I yeah. He did. And uh, like I dropped him back into town that evening. He was like, "What's the fuck?" I said, "No, no, that's not a measurement. That's just a fucking anomaly out there." Like because those people, yeah. I guarantee you, they, they, they've never heard of Hardy Bucks. Never. Yeah, it's a course. It's course, not course. in their fucking lexicon. It, like it's not in their fucking. Yeah. You know. But that was good. That was good for Owen too because he didn't have the guys in the character, or he oh, didn't yeah. have that. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. And it, oh, it's yeah. it's way healthier because you'll you know yourself. Pressure builds diamonds. Like you're not going to fucking if you're being constantly in an echo yes. chamber, you ain't going to grow. Like you know you. you yes. Yeah. So it's hand. It's that's why I love going to the gigs like that. Wild fucking yokes where. There's only maybe six teeth in the whole audience, like, and you you don't know if you're going to get a bait. And, <laughs> do you know, you don't know if you're going to get a bait, or if your car will be there afterwards, like, because you come away because yes. you're on a heightened edge, like, there's your adrenochrome is flying around your body, like, and if you can yes. channel that yes. then into fucking your material, I find yes. everybody comes away nearly like, a, like everybody's been riding, like, or so. Do you know? There's almost like yes. We're all going for a smoke after this, will we? Because this is fucking yes. lovely, you know. And there's then... a release. There's yeah, a release. Yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, we did some good gigs. So my my when we do our gigs, the three books left. Salmon comes on first, 
and salmon is well i had another character where i came on like a school teacher teacher kind of character and we were doing it in um Owen did a gig in london there's a there's a gig in a small comedy club it's actually a mola that's uh running it east e- e- estington i think it's called we did a gig what? there yeah bill I murray know. the bill murray yes bill murray yeah, yeah, yeah 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 it's yeah, a, yeah, it's a it's lovely it, spot beautiful spot yeah 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 beautiful spot. But yeah, but uh, we did a gig there, and I had this character with glasses, and I was coming out, and I was just coming out, uh, almost like salmon, there, uh, a bit like salmon. Do you know what I mean? I was coming out, but but going back to salmon, I remember he was uh, Owen was telling me all the comedians that were on that culture night were coming out, they were bombastic, they were moving the, the sign, they were moving the stage. Salmon comes out, and he walks up to the thing, and instead of moving it, he bends down like this and starts talking to <laughs> my this, and. The face bursts out laughing straight away. Do you know what I mean? It was a different perspective or a different uh, way of doing it. Do you know what I mean? And it worked, you know? So I remember I was doing a, a gig and I was coming out first and I introduced Owen as this kind of prudish kind of character. And then Owen came on and then I came on. And then we were doing three or four gigs in a row or something. And it was a daytime gig. And then Owen goes, why don't we just come on together? And not rehearsed. And I was like, okay, yeah. And it ended up, it was these poles down the thing. Ended up me craw- climbing up one of the poles, hanging on the poles, and on doing a set, and me shouting at him. And then it was like an English guy, a real <laughs> prudish kind of looking English guy. He was like, I was like, man, just move out of the way because I'm going to drop. And he goes, ha, 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 ha. I said, no, no, seriously, move out of the fuck away because I'm going to fucking fall. <laughs> but like, it was bizarre. It was bizarre. I would have loved, I would have loved to be there at that. I would have loved to be there at that, looking the other way, looking back at the audience, just to see the weirdness. Because yes, there's not, yes. I find that in, in London, especially because it's such an eclectic mix of people, but especially when you get like the suit wearing lads and they don't know what the fuck yes. to make of you. They're looking at oh. you going, mate, is she, is she okay? Is she, are you all right? Yeah. You know, <laughs> like I, didn't, I, didn't, I nearly had a mental breakdown in, well, it wasn't, but it was, I had a week of gigs and I did this gig. It was in the Backyard Comedy Club, which is a great comedy club. It's all made of pallets. It looks like it's all, it's all pallets they've used to do the stage at the back. Brilliant. And Brilliant. it was a dire night to fucking piss and rain outside. And there was only about a dozen people in and they were getting less and less. I think I've, I've gone out of focus there for some reason. And they were getting less and less in numbers. Like we were down to about fucking seven, I think, by the time. And everybody was going up and doing their set. And thanks be to God, I had enough stage maturity to point out the elephant in the room, like that people were dwindling. And yes. Were, and I, I literally, I, I said, and your man says, everybody's pulling up like five minutes short, Tom. When you're close, do you mind doing a little longer? I went, that's fine. That's fine. Yes. But I went up there and I, I said, there's no point in material with these lads because they're, there was lads in suits mostly like, and they were just sitting there because it's a very British thing to do is to just sit there for the sake of sitting there, you know, or do a thing for Tip the sake of lift. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, stay, well, we've paid, so, you know. Yeah, we're, we're getting we're, our money's worth. We're yeah. staying, we're staying, whereas, you know, you get, oh, fuck this, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. I went up and I literally, I just brought a stool up with me and sat down and went, all right, let's. You don't want to be here. Sure, look, at, most of us don't want to be here either. But Brilliant. we may as well fucking get through it together, will we? Will we get through it together? And you could see him kind of sitting up as well, be going, oh, this is a bit weird and a bit disconcerting, but yes, fuck it. Let's give it a go. And yeah. like that, then we could enter into it. Then the contract was open. Then we were like, right now, look at it. It isn't what we were all expecting. We thought to be a night at the Apollo, didn't we? We thought to be packed to the rafters, roaring mighty crack, but there's piss and rain outside there. Nobody's out. There's just 70 E and me. So will we have the crack like it's a Christmas party. And like that, we did then, you know, but it was, Brilliant. you know, Brilliant. and I, I mean, years later, a, a chap who was at that gig, I remember meeting at a festival, he went, that man, that shit was inspirational, seeing that. And he was a bloody, like, he's won a lot of awards, but I went, what are you talking about? Because just the way you actually broke down the fourth wall and you weren't the comedian anymore. You were just the, the bloke who's going to take charge in the last uh, half an hour. Brilliant. And it was, Brilliant. It, that was nearly the biggest compliment I think I've ever gotten. It was just, Brilliant. you know, and that it was like, oh, lovely. But that's You'll you'll get to that point too where it'll be just so enjoyable because people yes. want yes. people may not think yes. they want they may not not know what they want they'll go we'll go because we love him and we want to laugh but what they really want and yes. they don't know this is subliminal but they don't know what they want they want to feel comfortable that you're going to put down their purse from you're going to sit him down 
and you're going to rub the back of their head for half an hour that you're up there and they don't have to worry about mortgages the price yes. of fucking drink they don't have to worry about the fucking cunt living next door they don't have to worry about the fuck you know they don't want they just don't want to have to worry about the real world for that time you're up there so they need you just rubbing their neck whatever way you do that yes just, and yes. that's that's what i found 100 and once they kind of clip back, yeah, you're back in the room they're like ah oh, fuck and that's what you want from them you want them missing you you know what i mean because you miss them too yes you know? so yes there's a there's a mutual love there with a similar uh, similar with a similar gig to that in at loan i think it was at loan there was i think there might have been 10 people and two people let no there was there was, there was four couples and they were english and they left <laughs> and uh no, one of them stayed. I think one of them stayed, and the rest of them left. I thought they went out for a fag. One of them left, and then their phone rang. Her phone rang, and I was obviously, "Are you leaving?" And I, I grabbed her phone. And I went, "She's not leaving on stage." <laughs> you know what I mean? On stage. Perfect. And that made it even funnier. That made Brilliant. it even funnier. Do you know what I mean? It made it even funnier. And then I think I think I hugged everyone. Do you know afterwards? But like. The comedy we do is quite physical, so that's why I'm kind of worried after coming back from COVID. Like, I'm usually like jumping on top of people and walking among the crowd. And I'm like, you know, how's that going to work with COVID? I don't know. I, I I think drive on regardless because if people have chosen to be in a comedy club, you know what I mean, or or, or a venue, I think drive on. Like, there's Phil Nickel. He's a Canadian fucking genius of a Canadian comedian. Um, how we we did a bit of a tour around Ireland and he was on the podcast and he was telling me that like one of his last shows, like he literally togged off nothing down to just his boots. And that was his entrance. And what he, <laughs> and what he would do is what he would, he, and he was playing a theater. He walked yes. down on the backs of the chairs like, between people's shoulders. And the next thing he'd trip every so often and really? his, his flute would fall into a fella's face. Like, oh, and he's such, an, <laughs> he's such an adorable character. That you nearly wouldn't yes. get angry about. He just go oh, like his last show was called "If I Like It, I Lick It." That was, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> it's he's kind of a pervy bastard, but adorable in a lot of ways. And he's but on top of that, a fucking genius. But Brilliant. you know, like it's not good. Like Brilliant. he can, what's he gonna do now? I was suddenly yeah. not be that guy. Like, do you know? I think yes, to, yes. I think yes. play it, play it by ear. If you're gonna start bending yeah. rules as per a fucking pandemic. You know, I don't, See, I don't, yeah, because, yeah, because I had a similar thing to that. I was like, I, it happened by accident actually on stage one time in Kilkenny, and uh, it was the we was kind of off to the festival, we weren't on the festival, Owen was doing a gig, and uh, I was supporting him, and I had actually had a rip in my jeans, and then I ended up ripping the jeans, I ended up being in my jocks. So then, <laughs> then it got to the stage where I had to, before every gig, I had to go to like a secondhand shop and buy a couple of jeans so I could rip them on purpose. So I ended up in my jock. So then I was doing like a countryman kind of persona with the chest out, but it didn't yeah. work unless I was in my jocks. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. You, you yeah, couldn't yeah, see yeah. like, do you know, but it was similar to that. I'd be running around then, but I didn't take it that far and I didn't take the flute out. You know, yeah. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> and for the patreons uh <laughs> peter will have the cock out basically for the next exactly. half an hour <laughs> listen man i've taken up enough of your time i you know you're 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 a busy man around the place bouncing between bundorn and schlego and all the rest of it but uh you're it. i'm a mayo man at heart and i think we can all it. all agree do you know it'd be a do you know it'd be a right turn of events for fucking putting putting the nail in the coffin to COVID, fucking Mayo winning the football all Ireland. Do you know what I mean? Wouldn't that be a lo- a lovely fucking way of just capping off the last? Football? It would be brilliant. It would be brilliant. It would be brilliant. And if they bet Dublin, if they bet Kerry and Dublin, it'd be brilliant. Because if the if the one all Ireland and Kerry and Dublin miraculously got knocked out, they'd be like, uh, they never bet. They never bet Kerry or Dublin. Yeah. Do you know yeah. what I mean? You know. So if but if they bet Kerry and Dublin, I'd be brilliant. It would be fucking Kerry and Dublin on the same team, actually just playing a thirty lads playing against fucking Mayo, and Mayo still win. Like. <laughs> but yeah, no, it'd be brilliant. It'd be brilliant. It'd be great. It'd be a great boost for Mayo as well. You know what I mean? That you know because they're diehard fans. I think know? there's a lot of love out there for Mayo because, uh, well, it's a, it's a magical fucking place anyway. Like it's it, it is. We, we honeymooned in Mayo. Uh, you know, it was just brilliant. F- fucking fantastic. It's a beautiful place. A lot it of is. magical, weird people. I just, I, yes. I, I feel at one over that side of the country, you know. hundred percent. We did a run there a couple of months back. Before oh, the, the charity run. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. The charity run. 
in the the break between the pandemics, we got like oh, we got like a three month window. Where it was yeah. like, Level two. Do what you want. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but uh, during that we me seven cow we did a run for like a hospice, a local hospice there. Um, but I never realized how beautiful it was. You know what I mean? Oh. You, Things underneath your nose, you don't realize. How beautiful. You're probably recognizing things at home now that you never seen when you were young. That you realize how beautiful it is. Well, it's my my missus moved now. Like we live at the base of the Galtee Mountains. Like so, it's, beautiful. Do you know, it looks like the Rockies. It's ridiculous. Like yeah, beautiful. You know, beautiful. like there's deer literally fucking eating. You know, out in the front lawn. Like yes. this, it's like fucking a thousand acre wood around here. Winnie the Pooh is just short of sticking his head over the fucking wall. Like, but brilliant. Brilliant. So it, it is, yeah, it's, a, it's, I would urge anybody to get themselves over to, you know, the, the wild Atlantic way. And the likes of Mayo fucking, I fit in nicely with them, them people over that. Good, 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 good people. And fuck it, would they stop? Put away the bridesmaids dresses and finally fucking win the fucking thing. Be one thing if you were shit and you weren't making yeah, some finals yeah. or finals. You go, ah, yeah. fair enough. But yeah, they're fucking good. That's the killer. They are good. <laughs> they are good. Yeah, and they're saying that that final, I think, when was it, two thousand and sixteen? I was, I was at one of the finals. I'm not good with crowds. Usually, I get a bit claustrophobic. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, I was at that one, and it was, it's, it's almost, it's raw. It's there's the tribalism, and oh, it's like, very, ah. yeah, yeah. And it's, it's, oh, the players, but they warm up. They were, I don't know how players warm up. They're warming up like for thirty minutes beforehand, and you're like. Jesus Christ, they're not wrecked. And then I was talking to a lad, he was like, no, they have to go in hot. They have to go in hot. They can't be going in cold. They have to be going in hot. I go, what do you mean? He goes, you know, when you're driving the car and you've got it up, you've got it up to 60. Well, they have to be hitting them at 60. And I was like, okay, you, you seem to know a lot about this. You know, some random like, you know, <laughs> so they have to go in hot. The only, the only thing I want is for some, I, do you know, this is a fucking three bucks left fucking thing. You need to write a song for Mayo because you're singing fucking songs written by a Galway fucking band there. Yes. In the Saw yes, Doctors. Yes, yes, Man, yes. No, it's like, true. There's, there's... It's true, it's true, it's true. But they're they're adopted. They're kind of adopted Mayo people at this stage. Yeah, right? a fuck. Yeah. They'll adopt themselves into fucking Ross Commons. Like, see, that's the cuteness of it, is writing a song for a county. That's what you do. Like, you write a that's song it, for a that's county. That's it. That's we'll it. Do... You'll make money forever yeah. off that. I think it, uh, three bucks left would be the right, would be just justifiable. To write a song I think so. Maybe, maybe now you never know. You never know. Well, listen, good. That is the crack. Listen, Tom, thank you, you for so much for having me on. You're and an thanks, absolute thanks champion. Thanks for coming on our podcast. Sorry, I wasn't there to chat to you. Not at all. You're on our this, podcast. This is made up for. We've now developed a great, a great fucking uh, like. There's a catalog now. There's a fucking catalog. It wasn't. We didn't blow our load <laughs> all in just the one. Yo, we have a catalog of the buys now. This is fantastic. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> good stuff, Tom. Listen, thanks very much, buddy. Mind yourself. Good luck, Peter. Cheers. Take it easy. Good luck.